What was it like working with the phenomenal Carla Gugino as, as your wife? I, I mean, I was kind of, I was invested in that relationship and it's a testament to the work you guys did together. What made that relationship come across so well? Well, first of all, she's the best. She is a great lady and a wonderful professional actress. Uh, she is so, so well disciplined and she's so, uh, interested in making it the best. Um, so you're always in good hands when you're working with Carla. And I just, I really enjoyed getting to know her and, uh, she always is, she's kind of like, um, she she's kind of like royalty. That's what she seems like when she comes on set, you know, it's like everybody kind of has an audience with her and kind of defers to her. And like, you, you know, you, you, you just want to earn her respect, but uh, at the same time, you feel like she could probably kill you with her stilettos. <laughs> <laughs> So, so coming off of Hill House, you've got to tell me what it was like getting the call to work on Doctor Sleep. I mean, you were tasked with the with with accurately portraying one of the most iconic characters and roles in cinema history, that of Jack Torrance in The Shining. How did that role come about? That was another one of um, Mike Flanagan's phone calls saying, "I have two parts for you." Now there's one that only works for a day, but I think it's pretty iconic. Uh, but I understand if you don't want to do it. That's how he snares me. He says, I understand if you don't want to do it. And then I say, well, wait, why wouldn't I want to do it? Yeah, so he talked to me about playing this role and I said, yeah, that sounds fun. And, you know, as long as we're not doing a send up of, of Jack Nicholson's performance or doing a Jack Nicholson impersonation. Uh, and, you know, he, of course, did not want to do that. What did Mike ask of you when trying to explain what he wanted? I mean, how did he try to direct you in, in those scenes? Well, I, I think Mike was dialing me back a lot because I think I was, I was making more definitive jumps into Jack Nicholson and into Lloyd and into Delbert Grady. And it was like, because it's the most work I've ever done for one day of work. Like I had to shave my head a month ahead of that and do a bunch of wig fittings. And I only had really two scenes. So I had worked on these scenes for a month and I had, sort of i guess extrapolated like too much i had like done too yeah, much preconceived work. notions of yeah, like oh this is where he is now and here he is and, you know so i got to set and mike was like no 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 we're doing this and this and you know it's i i was really happy with the with the scenes and it was fun and a lot of people didn't even realize uh that it was me and you're talking about, I mean, because you had, you were finding yourself back with so many co-stars from Hill House, you know, for The Haunting of Blind Manor, Midnight Mass. I mean, you had a lot of the same co-stars, right? A lot of the same, yeah. Um, but I didn't really uh, work with them on... Uh, on Dr. Sleep very much, you know, it was, uh, I was just in and out. It was just because it was like a couple of days there, but you know what though, it's, it still feels like a lot of the great directors do this, having kind of a, a group, core group, you know, when you look at uh, Scorsese, when you look at Tarantino, when you look at, you know, there are certain people that, you know, that certain, they like to use a lot of the same, same people. I mean, heck, how many Harrison, how many, how many Spielberg movies has Harrison Ford been in? You know, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's nice. And I understand it. You know, you, you, you kind of, it's, you approach it like I'm going to get the right tool for the job and I understand how this guy works and that woman uh, brings this to the role. And, you know, it, it's, it's great. I understand it as a director and it's fun as an actor to, to know 
the performers that you're working with and and have a chance to work with them in different in different characters. Does does it make life easier as an actor? I mean, does that established relationship help you to be your best, or does it somehow? I mean, I I, I can't think how it would take away, but maybe I don't know. Uh, no, I think it 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 does help. You know, it it takes away the getting to know you hour or you know the surprises of oh I did a scene with this guy and this is the way they work and you know I'm it threw me or something, you know, I mean, it happens. So, so it is, it is nice to, to work with the same people, especially if you like them. And, and luckily all of the people that Flanagan usually hires are, are good, good actors, but also pretty decent folk usually. So with, with Midnight Mass, um, almost like having a religious experience watching that show, um, yeah. you were in on some of the monologues that uh, Linklater so powerfully gave. What did you think of his performance and what he was able to deliver there? Well, I, he was fantastic in that role. Um, and it was so much to do. It was so much to remember and and so much performance you know and he did a lot of those big speeches uh you know back to back in the same day um you know i sat in the church for most of midnight mass like as a you know featured extra uh most days and so I got to see a lot of uh, a lot of his work, and uh, I was very impressed. I mean, we all were very impressed. Did do you ever have like holy crap? I'm feeling things right now. Moment like so many of us did watching. Like, I mean, does it? If I mean, when you're actually in it and somebody's doing something like that, I mean, obviously it's designed to evoke certain emotions. People watching it on film, but can, do you have moments where somebody's giving such a performance that you that actually evokes the same emotion from you as an as as an actor or just as a person, literally on set? Oh, for sure, yeah. And it's great when you have speeches like that that you can see because it really, you know, it's an it's an unadulterated performance. Um, and so it helps you times, draw too, right? It helps you draw. Oh, no, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's all happening at once in real time, which in film, you don't get that a lot. So it, it's it's nice. And... You know, Mike Flanagan, he really, really, uh, he loves a speech. You know, he loves a monologue. So we we have an opportunity to do a lot of that kind of stuff in, in, in most of his productions. But Midnight Mass was particularly heavy on that. Of your many collaborations with Mike at this point, do you have a favorite or is it kind of like picking between children or? Hill House is my favorite uh, in, in terms of the total project, like how it how it turned out. Um, I love the story and I think the performances are all great and it's fun. And my personal favorite character that I've played is uh, Lord Henry Wingrave from Haunting of Bly Manor. He was the most fun that I've had uh, and my character in the upcoming Fall of the House of Usher was a lot of fun to play. So wrapping us up, this year I believe marks the 40th anniversary of E.T. And I understand yes. you were recently reunited with Drew Barrymore, Dee Wallace, and uh, Robert McNaughton. When was the last time you'd all been together like that? Before this year, the last time we had all gotten together was at the 20th anniversary for E.T., uh, at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles, where John Williams conducted the orchestra live uh, with the with the film, and that you, was a wonderful. Do you ever get emotional thinking back to those people that experienced those 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 memories? I mean, it feels like they're all kind of my family. You know, they're all some kind of cousins uh 
once removed. But we we keep in touch and we see each other at these weird events every so many years. <laughs> like weddings and like 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 with with normal families with weddings and funerals, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. It's like, oh, um, well, the reason why it. I ask is because I wanted to ask you if, if Hill House or anything else was able to top that ET experience, or or because of it being what it was, you know, it 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 is that's always going to be the the most cherished thing or have other things come up, you know, or, well, or are they just, like I said, picking between trying to pick between children in a way it is picking between children, but it's also what the audience finds. I think that's, that's really the, the key deciding factor because now I experience a, a younger generation of fans who know me from Hill House and don't realize that I'm the guy from E.T. Yeah. You know, where they put it together after the fact. And so, you know, if, if there's any law or, or, or something that we can follow, it's just that time will change everything, right? <laughs>